At the end of this video, you should be able to name and use SI units for length, mass, time, volume, and density, distinguish between mass and weight, and perform density calculations. Chapter 2, Section 2, SI Measurements. Scientists all over the world have agreed on a single measurement system called Le Sistema Internacional de Units, abbreviated as SI. This system was adopted in 1960 by the General Conference on Weights and Measures. SI has seven base units, and most other units are derived from these seven. Some non-SI units are still commonly used by chemists and are also used in this book. SI units are defined in terms of standards of measurement. The standards are objects or natural, natural phenomena that are constant in value, easy to pre uh, preserve and reproduce, and practical in size. International organizations monitor the defining process. In the United States, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology plays the main role in maintaining standards and setting style conventions. For example, numbers are written in the form that is agreed upon internationally. The number 75,000 is written 75 space 000, not 75 comma 000, because the comma is used in other countries to represent a decimal point. SI base units. The seven SI base units and their standard abbreviated symbols are listed in Table 2-1 on page 34 of your text or on the screen now. All the other SI units can be derived from these fundamental units. Prefixes added to the names of the SI base units are used to represent quantities that are larger or smaller than the base units. Table 2-2 on page 35 of your text or on the screen now lists SI prefixes using units of length as examples. For example, the prefix centi, abbreviated C, represents the exponential factor of 10 to the negative second power, which equals 1 divided by 100. Thus, 1 centimeter, or 1 cm, equals 0 0.01 meters, or 1 one hundredth of a meter. Mass. As you learned in chapter 1, mass is a measure of the quantity of matter. The SI standard unit for mass is the kilogram. The standard for mass, defined in Table 2-1, is used to calibrate balances all over the world. The mass of a typical textbook is about 1 kilogram. The gram, represented as G, which is 1 1,000th of a kilogram, is more useful for measuring masses of small objects, such as flasks or beakers. For even smaller objects, such as tiny, uh, tiny quantities of chemicals, the milligram, mg, is often used. The milligram is one one thousandth of a gram, or one one millionth of a kilogram. Mass is often confused with weight because people often express the weight of an object in grams. Mass is determined by comparing the mass of an object with a set of standard masses that are part of the balance. Weight is a measure of the gravitational pull on matter. Unlike weight, mass does not depend on such an attraction. Mass is measured on instruments such as a balance, and weight is typically measured on a spring scale. Taking weight measurements involves reading the amount that an object pulls down on a spring. As the force of Earth's gravity on an object increases, the object's weight increases. The weight of an object on the moon is about one-sixth of its weight on Earth. The astronaut's mass is the same as it was on Earth, but in orbit, her weight is zero. Length. The SI standard unit for length is the meter. A distance of one meter is about the width of the average doorway. 
To express longer distances, the kilometer, or km, is used. One kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Road signs in the United States sometimes show distances in kilometers as well as miles. The kilometer is a unit used to express highway distances in most other countries of the world. To express shorter distances, the centimeter is often used. From table 2-2 on page 35 of your text, or on the screen now, you can see that one centimeter equals one one-hundredth of a meter. The width of your textbook is just over 20 centimeters. Derived SI units. Many SI units are combinations of the quantities shown in table 2-1 on page 34 of your text. Combinations of SI base units form derived units. Some derived units are shown in table 2-3 on page 36 of your text or on the screen now. Derived units are produced by multiplying or dividing standard units. For example, area, a derived unit, is length times width. If both length and width are expressed in meters, the area unit equals meters times meters, or square meters, abbreviated as m squared. The last column of table 2-3 shows the combination of fundamental units used to obtain derived units. Some combination units are given their own names. For example, pressure expressed in base units is actually kilograms per meters second squared. The name Pascal, abbreviated capital P, lowercase a, is given to this combination. You will learn more about pressure in chapter 10. Prefixes can also be used to express derived units. Area can be expressed in centimeters squared or millimeters squared. Volume. Volume is the amount of space occupied by an object. The derived unit of volume is cubic meters, or meters to the third power. One cubic meter is equal to the volume of a cube whose edges are one meter long. Such a large unit is inconvenient for expressing the volume of materials in the chemistry laboratory. Instead, a smaller unit, the cubic centimeter, is often used, cm to the third power. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, so a cubic meter contains 1 million cubic centimeters. When chemists measure the volumes of liquids and gases, they often use a non-SI unit called the liter. The liter is equivalent to 1 cubic decimeter. Thus, a liter, represented with a capital L, is also equivalent to 1,000 cubic centimeters. Another non-SI unit, the milliliter, is used for smaller volumes. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Because there are also 1,000 cubic centimeters in a liter, the two units, milliliter and cubic centimeter, are interchangeable. Volume is defined as the amount of space occupied by an object. The volume of a solid, like this cube, may be measured in cubic meters or cubic centimeters. The volume of a liquid is often measured in liters or milliliters. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. The volumes of irregularly shaped solids can be measured by the amount of liquid they displace. For example, this rock's volume can be measured by dropping it into the graduated cylinder and reading the new liquid level. The volume of a gas can be measured by measuring the volume of the container it is in, because a gas will expand to fill its container. Liquids have adhesion. Water, for instance, adheres to glass. This creates a meniscus and slightly complicates the measure of the volume of liquids in a graduated cylinder. Water forms a meniscus and the liquid curves up the sides of the graduated cylinder. To measure the volume of water in a graduated cylinder, read the value at the bottom of the meniscus. The picture shows a value of 9.5 milliliters. A smaller graduated cylinder creates more curvature in the meniscus than a larger one. 
Mercury forms a concave meniscus and the liquid curves down. To measure the volume of mercury in a graduated cylinder, read the top of the meniscus. Density. An object made of cork feels lighter than a lead object of the same size. What you are actually comparing in such cases is how massive objects are compared with their size. This property is called density. Density is the ratio of mass to volume, or mass divided by volume. Mathematically, the relationship for density can be written as is shown on the screen now. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. The quantity m is mass, v is volume, and d is density. The SI unit for density is derived from the base units for mass and volume, the kilogram or cubic meter respectively, and can be expressed as kilograms per cubic meter, kg divided by m cubed. This unit is inconveniently large for the density measurements that you will make in the laboratory. You will often see density expressed in grams per cubic centimeter, g divided by cm cubed, or grams per milliliter, g divided by ml. The densities of gases are generally reported either in kilograms per cubic meter or in grams per liter. Density is a characteristic physical property of a substance. It does not depend on the size of the sample because the sample's mass increases also, the volume increases proportionately, and the ratio of mass to volume is constant. Therefore, density can be used as one property to help identify a substance. Table 2-4 on page 38 of your text, or on the screen now, shows the densities of some common materials. As you can see, cork has a density of only 0.24 grams per cubic centimeter, which is less than the density of liquid water. Because cork is less dense than water, it floats on water. Lead, on the other hand, has a density of 11.35 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of lead is greater than water, so lead sinks in water. Note that Table 2-4 specifies the temperatures at which the densities were measured. That is because density varies with temperature. Most objects expand as temperature increases, thereby increasing their volume. Because density is mass divided by volume, density usually decreases with increasing temperature. The density of a substance is equal to the mass of the substance divided by its volume. At this point, you should be able to name and use SI units for length, mass, time, volume, and density, distinguish between mass and weight, and perform density calculations.